Hello everybody and welcome. So tonight I'm just hopping on for a very, very, very brief moment and um, we're going to be doing and have a look at the Batman theme. So I thought originally I was going to be having a look at just the film themes but I decided to throw in the TV theme as well because let's face it, everyone knows what that is and it is exciting and it's diverse and it kind of brings about what life was like on the TV terms of how they approached the comic book characters and things like that so obviously the new batman film is coming out this weekend i'm very very much looking forward to that because i'm going to be very lucky enough to see that on a big screen which is going to be my first time in a cinema for well over two and a half years so that's going to be exciting so i am actually multi-streaming today i'm multi-streaming to my youtube channel Hello everyone on YouTube if you are watching this live or on the replay and I'm also going to be multi-streaming this to my Facebook page as well. Hello to everyone there if you are watching and of course if you'd like to comment and say hello I will be able to see those comments and I will be able to feature those on the screen so make sure that you do that and we can get this party started. So for the next short time probably the next 45 minutes or so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking through the well not going to be talking I'm going to be showing you the music of those main Batman movies and also the TV theme and we're going to look at in chronological order how the movie theme has changed over the years as well as different composers have approached it in different ways as well so all pretty cool so I think my first experience as probably with many in my generation was Batman way back on the TV series and that was really what I wanted to be able to show you so that kind of like classic uh Just like that so that kind of comic comic kind of uh i don't know it's, it's just kind of how it was in that day it was how how they were seen it's kind of quite twee quite camp quite kind of like the bad guys are going to be chased by the good guys and the good guys are going to check they're going to catch them you know what i mean so it's that kind of um mad kind of time so um i'm just going to keep the microphone on so I do apologize for any thuds that you can hear on the keys Is that almost like um it's around that time of the 60s it was that kind of uh how would i describe it i don't know it's almost like a various kind of melodic forms are used in that time as well so that was very much what i knew uh, growing up and then it wasn't until maybe i was maybe 11 12 that of course the next theme came along so we're sort of talking the Danny Elfman generation when I saw well actually I saw Batman fairly late on I know it was kind of controversial because it was one of the first films that came out that it had a kind of um PG-12 there was some it was it couldn't I remember the BBFC at the time the British Board of Film Classification couldn't quite fit it in to what it classed as a PG or a 15 it wasn't quite a 15 but it was a bit more mature than a PG so it took on a whole new twist and of course partly down to the uh, to the aesthetic of it and I just really liked that foreboding brooding darkness that that almost climactic resolution which I'd never heard of that sort of minor major at the time I remember thinking wow this is so new and of course adding in extra instrumentation bass clarinets really low brass gruff uh, really raspy brass as well So that kind of theme um, very much um, emblematic of the of the Elfman sound. Uh, 
a minor major. You know, that very much was uh, part of the melodic language of the time. And they used very, I mean, there was loads of people had that. It's probably what cemented the idea of moving forward in that sense of what was to be the, I don't know, one could argue that's probably what the, the template was for superhero themes moving forward. It kind of had that sense of foreboding, but darkness, but playfulness. And obviously Danny Elfman went on to score Spider-Man, the original trilogy as well but obviously for the um for for sony but um there's so many of us at high school i remember we'd come in to the piano we'd just sit down and just have a go like you know it just was so so nice so of course danny elfman really inspired me in that early stage and of course i i went to town on that and i used to create midi tracks of which i think a video in future on the youtube channel by the way is going to be me looking at what some of those old compositions were those tinny midi compositions that i've got on tape i'm going to try and resurrect the midi files if i can find a computer old enough but certainly i recorded everything on a cassette tape and i've got those i'm i'll probably do a live stream of that listening in what they were like and talking about the music and where my head was at, at the time it could be quite good so make sure you hit subscribe for that because it could be quite exciting so yes so Really loved the, really loved that, that that period of time, and then we sort of move into when the Batman film sequel started to change. Uh, you know, Elliot Goldenthal's kind of score for Batman Forever. You know, um, did sort of return back to that original 60s, 70s TV tweet, um, but then also had a, a sort of. I don't know when the, when the song became vitally part of the of the film score as well in the late eighties and nineties. But yeah, so his score, um, very sort of brass, raspy brass as well as that, uh, had a different kind of vibe to that one too. Um, it's so much so that I've actually just forgotten how it goes. So I can't actually play it to you. So it may come back. And then of course, Q, the whole realm of Hans Zimmer. And his involvement with the Batman world. So you had with Batman, you had this uh, almost going away from like real heavy sort of gothic melody to as few notes as possible playing the theme. So you, again, the idea of foreboding that darkness. And that obviously with Hans Zimmer backed up with that rhythmic quality. So that rhythmic, real big sort of taiko drum with really vast numbers of bass instruments, especially in the strings and the brass, and really sort of cemented that real level of darkness within a score. So Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Obviously Dark Knight, you probably would remember. Batman Begins was really kind of where that language was, was used, but... Dark Knight especially, is that when that... And that theme appeared in quite a lot of things. I actually found it in video games as well. Uh, Enon Zur, um, when he was doing Fallout. Fallout 4 and a few others, he had that... You know, that very simple bass. Yeah, really sort of simplistic and stuff like that. So... Hello Amir, welcome to the stream, welcome, let me know where you are watching from, it'd be great to hear from you, so, uh, yeah, so, so that really became the language around that time as well, and then moving on from The Dark Knight, you obviously had that, that Joker, and it was very much about rhythm, using very few notes, but that rhythm you know I'll choose a couple of other uh, sounds in a minute actually that we can maybe explore rather than just be all piano based so I'll just get my my dot up actually just why now the sounds I've got here are very very old um, but I'm going to be using some newer ones as well and importantly you know the idea of um, that that rhythm like
and then I that repetitive that ostinato bass ostinato really sort of featured quite richly in the music as well so and then of course that then fed into the other things that it was always that all those two notes as well that fed somewhat into the Batman versus Superman world I mean I know it's not strictly just a Batman film but it's certainly a film that um, so that idea that using those two notes but then building up something more hopeful you had the darkness So yeah, the idea of you are building those up. So again, simple melodic language used. And now we're coming to a new theme, Michael Giacchino's theme for The Batman. You know, the brand new film that's coming out this weekend at the time of recording. And the whole melodic language in that music, from what I've heard with the clips online so far, really does bridge what I feel as the Hans Zimmer version, but also really bridges that with the... Danny Elfman version as well so um, basically I would say that if you ever get a chance to stream it then listen to it do check out that uh, Michael Giacchino one as well um, something a bit like this ah Amir's watching from Germany wonderful thank you very much so I would say thank you very much for watching this stream and thank you very much for being a part so hopefully you'll get to enjoy what we're going to be doing so So what the new theme starts off with, same idea, you've got still two notes. It starts off quite brooding. Oh, that's very kind of me. You're happy to see I'm live. It's hopefully, hopefully something I'm going to try and do more often. I'm going to be doing many, many more live streams actually in the coming weeks. So I'm going to get together a schedule and I'm going to get together some topics and basically it's a chance. I want to get to know you, I want to get to know my audience, I want you to be more involved in the direction of things in terms of the videos that I'm making and the kind of content that's going on as well. So um, thank you very much for that kind words. I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be live actually. I am very pleased to be live. I am using purely a mobile phone setup. I've got some details of that in the description down below, so do check those out as well. So I'm going to be doing that, and as we go on, I'll talk you through that if you want to know any more about that. And anything that, of course, I'm doing, do let me know in the comments and in the chat. So the new theme starts very simply. These two notes feature very, very prominently through the music that I've heard, certainly. And then it builds up to... Um, And then it slows down. Now all the way through that, it builds up that. And there's lots of... So it uses those two notes, and it's accentuated with the right, but basically... And it builds up. So it's amazing how using such simple music language, how that can really help you with your music making as well. So we're going to attempt to bring together all of these ideas. In fact, I've unearthed a really, really, really old, horribly hammy uh, video. And basically, um, I'm going to share it with you. A really old version of a, of, <laughs> of a Batman theme, which I wrote with really old sounds. So we're going to try and update it and add it and improve it. And together I'll talk about some of the sound libraries and things that I'm using if you would really like to know as well. So we're going to be using that. So the idea of that, that minor to major language that I spoke about before that Danny Elfman uses, that Michael Giacchino theme definitely goes from that minor to major. So just uh, once again to show you. 
much like the yeah, so the minor to the major. So that's definitely one thing that's really stuck with me. That's that continuity, that continuity there from the old theme to the new theme has actually been quite important. And also the idea is using those two notes. So much like uh, Hans Zimmer, you've got this. I supposed to. Um, So it's really building on that language. So it's staying within the Batman universe, but of course the Batman universe is constantly evolving. The music is constantly evolving. And and I would think this is actually going to be quite a good theme. And I'm looking forward to, as I do this with quite a lot of films, I used to be in a, I don't know if, you, if you're like this as well, but um, if you ever sort of watch a film and you know it's going to come out and sometimes you catch the music before you see the film. I used to do that quite a lot when I was younger. Now this one I've, only really heard the theme and I'm really trying to stay away from listening to too much of the music because I used to sort of imagine the music and imagine what the scene in the film would be like and then I think oh this is amazing but then now I'm thinking I want to be surprised by this one so I'm looking forward to just experiencing it for the first time much like I did with The Dark Knight because having seen Batman Begins moving into The Dark Knight was completely unknown to me and I had no expectations at all so I wanted to go in to the cinema as of course it's the first time in two and a half years of going into the cinema so that's all good so um, yeah it is definitely fun to be live and I'm glad you're learning a lot Amir and welcome as I say to the live stream so I'm hoping that um, a this multi stream as I'm doing I'm actually streaming live through a mobile to YouTube and my Facebook page as well so if you don't catch it all on the YouTube channel definitely head over to the Facebook page again links for that are down below as well so I will definitely provide information about the piano sound Amir that is absolutely no problem whatsoever so I will share with you at the moment that I'm using a mixture of sounds the piano sound I'm using specifically is an east-west piano and it's I think um, a Steinway, a Steinway Grand but I've also used some sounds from what was Garage Band in this example I'm going to show you but mainly now the sounds that I use are Spitfire audio ones so you'll see me um, we'll load them in real time obviously if I do edit this down for a shorter video I'll be able to cut out a lot of this stuff but yeah so I'll talk you through that absolutely no problem at all and these are sounds that have just been built up over time I started super simple with stock MIDI sounds that came with GarageBand that came with Logic and then I then discovered East West Composer Cloud Plus and then I moved into um, Spitfire audio libraries because I discovered you could use things like this MIDI controller you could then use lots of good dynamic phrasing and things like that which I'd never had before in my music so I wanted to be able to do that and um, yeah to, to, be, to be able to make better more musical sounding music if that makes sense so just to give you an example of what that sounds like have a listen to this really hammy version from many many years ago in fact it's so old some of the sounds don't even work as well but have a listen to this so i'm going to just start it halfway through if it doesn't conk out on me right <laughs> So that's the kind of level of sounds that we were dealing with and this was probably about 12 years ago I think this was but I really liked some of the east-west libraries that we're using so they so you've got um, what's known as middle earth drums you can imagine what that would be alluding to the kind of film that would be written for but I mean it really does um, give that cinematic percussion now obviously uh, there are other libraries that do similar there's Spitfire Audio Hammers which has a really good wealth of percussion sounds that is I think being created by the former drummer or the drummer for Nine Inch Nails uh, you'll probably know him as Alf Cole uh, not Alf Clausen he's involved in The Simpsons <laughs> but yeah he's uh, also written the music for the Saw franchise as well Again, I haven't turned down the mic, so I do apologise if you hear the thuds in the background. Um, yeah, it's a good piano sound, I must admit. Uh, let's share that with you now, because the piano sound here, and I'll just show you on the screen, is... Um, 
This particular one is Steinway and it's the East West uh, Quantum Leap. It's the Pianos Platinum. So yeah, it's uh, it's a good sound and you can tweak it as well. So if it sounds a bit, sometimes I find it sounds a little bit too reverby. You can change and adapt how much you want. You can change that over here. I don't know if you can see that there. So you can change how much reverb you've got. And of course you've got all the tools at your disposal just with that in one interface as well. So it's it's a really good one. Uh, there are loads actually. If you want a free piano as well, Amir, if you, I'd recommend if you've got a digital audio workstation like GarageBand or Logic or Reaper or something like that, if you go to Spitfire Labs, then there are some free piano sounds that you can get there right out of the, the bat and they sound really good. There's also some low cost piano libraries that they do. They're around £29, so roughly the same in euros or probably a little bit less, maybe €25 euros or something like that. So, And you'll get some really fantastic sounding pianos. So if you love piano sounds and you want to get a whole range of different ones, they've got a whole range of ones as well. Uh, they're not sponsoring me, obviously, to do this live stream. This is just me doing the live stream. But basically, uh, it's a really good place to start if you want a good piano sound. So either Composer Cloud, Pianos Platinum, which is, um, I think is from memory $19.99, $19, so $20 in US. I don't know what that would be in Euro, probably something similar. Um, the pound to the dollar is mad at the moment. So $1 equals 75 pence. So it's just fluctuating all the time with, with world chaos and forces at the moment. So yeah, um, so this sort of, this hammy sound really is quite phenomenally um, where I started from. I know you could you can sense the inspiration there, and basically it would be it's is worth doing. But yeah, so yeah, I hope one day do life. I will happily, absolutely happily consider that I'm here. Yes, I could definitely do. I, I love film scores. Film scores is where I'm at. So I want to do more around film scores. And of course, I have to be careful because I can't use actual clips of those film scores because of copyright reasons. The live stream would be flagged and it would be shut down both on Facebook and YouTube, certainly. So I want to be able to use my mind to just pick out the theme, play it on the piano, isolating that is a good thing and certainly inception yeah because inception was all about time and its processing of the time so using um so it was using a handful of notes and then it was drawing them out in different lengths of time depending on where the level was in terms of the dream state that the main characters found themselves in loads of fascinating stuff on that as well Ah, oh, you've got Hans Zimmer piano. Yeah, so you'll know how good that sounds like, yeah. So if you've got Hans Zimmer piano from Spitfire, then that's a really good piano sound to start off with. And if you know Spitfire Audio, definitely recommend some of their other piano libraries as well. So jolly good stuff. So we are going to... Um, yeah, so if I was starting with this, I would be having... We could do the kind of call to arms percussion, yes, but we want to keep it nice and subtle. Now, because all of the um, because all the Batman, we're gonna get rid of that. Start with a clean slate. Because all the Batman sounds start with. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's different. there is different piano sounds, definitely. Um, this is just the Steinway, but there's also Beckstein in there. Uh, you, and also, if you really want to, if you have a piano that you really like the sound of, and you've got access to a simple recording and a good mic, sample that piano and bring it into your own door, because that is ultimately... I had a piano when I was a child, and we had to get rid of it because we moved to so many houses, and... Yeah, and it just became clunky and bulky and it had to be retuned all the time. But actually, if I had skills then, I would have sampled that piano and um, and actually looked very similar to the one that uh, basically the <laughs> Spitfire Audio dropped from a great height in Christian Henson's video, if you've ever watched that one. I watched that and I thought, oh, that looks very similar to the piano that I used to own. But yeah, it just became unwieldy. But yeah, you want to capture these things because... Um, yeah, you want to capture these things because basically it's a case of if you don't 
capture these things and then you lose it you sort of cap you lose that essence i suppose it's a bit like if i was when i was younger i, I would sing quite a lot and i was in a lot of ensembles and i would do lots of competitions and things like that but then no one ever recorded me singing solo as a pure voice and then when that goes when your voice drops you lose it i can never sing very high anymore so it's that um so this is interesting um and i'm just going to use this piano sound since uh i'm getting some good feedback from that amir so i will do that for you as well so we're just going to keep to that major minor minor major And if you will permit me for the next sort of 20 minutes or so, I'm just going to get some ideas down. Uh, keep sending your comments and of course I will respond to them. It's always good to, to know there are people watching and also people who are going to share ideas. So if you've got any ideas as this process goes on as well, throw them my way. So um, I, I'm, I'm te I hate recording with a click when we're doing a live stream because it does sound really annoying. But then I might just do that just because... It just might help and get my custom and then turn this down a bit. So good, good, good. So what uh, DAW, what digital audio workstation are you using, Amir? Just drop on a drop a comment down below. Are you using Logic as well or are you using something else? Be interested to know what you're using your Spitfire audios with or Spitfire audio um, sound libraries with as well. So I'm just going to get some ideas down. Okay, okay, okay. We can we can deal with that. And of course, um, we can tidy it up maybe and sort of those dodgy notes. So I don't know what it's like. I mean, writing whilst live streaming is always a difficult, um, is always a difficult thing, and uh, sometimes that can affect the process. Where sometimes you just want to get in the zone and then speak to nobody, shut the door, and just get in the zone and get it done. So um, I absolutely save my live streams, yes, Amir, just in case that the actual live stream goes down. I always have a local copy as well. So whenever I'm uh, doing a live stream, the mobile phones, I use it, um, basically iPhone and iPad, it always saves them. So and it always saves them in a really good high quality video as well. So say the live stream goes down for whatever reason, I've always got a local version and all the audios recorded good high quality as well. So yeah, I absolutely make sure I do because there's nothing worse than having a live stream you can never revisit or re-edit or you know, repurpose in whatever way. So it's, it's super important. So I always save, always save, always save. So yeah, I'm going to grab a drink if I can. So yeah, so Germany, um, is it the same time? Is it roughly seven o'clock over there or is it eight o'clock? Um, yes, is it an hour, are you an hour ahead? I can never remember. So we've got this simple kind of piano line going on here. Where's that bum note? There you are. Now, I absolutely love some of the string libraries and um, this, the lovely logic. It is a lovely logic. You know, I jumped from Garage Band and I, um, I have to admit that when I first started using Logic, I, I was thinking, how on earth is this going to translate? But actually, it's translated pretty well. I um, This is not the template. I would, this is very, very basic. This is showing you what the... Um, in terms of what, what I used to do back in the day. Now the templates are a bit more advanced, which I'll maybe show you if I've got time in a different live stream. So, um, but yeah... 
So I'm going to use, I'm going to replace this one. I'm not going to use play. I'm going to use Spitfire Audio and I'm going to use, I think, um, ooh, where is it now? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think I'm going to use Abbey Road 1, but I'm just going to see because the string sounds for me is going to be quite interesting. Just for speed, I'm just going to use the whole orchestra just to get me a, a real full... Um, So yeah, um, it does have a hint of quite a lot in there. I mean, some people may argue it does have a kind of Imperial March vibe to it. Uh, and other people may argue that, that it doesn't. Let me just turn this up a little shade and let's see what this sounds like together. And we can play with the tempo there, I think, as well. And I'm just playing it really, really quietly. Yeah, so, oh, it's an hour ahead, is it? Fantastic. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, with that said then, good evening and welcome once again. So. I think that sounds pretty good and it's amazing just from, I'm just going to change this as well, so I mean some people have ready made, um, some people have ready made kind of templates that they like to use. I just like to use ready made templates which I've done but also um, I like to sort of play around with the ones that I've already got so I revisit old stuff all the time and I think hmm how could I improve it so there's there's been stuff I've always revisited. Whenever I get a better sound, I always try and revisit some of the older music and try and bring it to to life. What kind of um what kind of sounds do you like the most, Enemy? What's your favourite one? And anyone else who may be watching, let me know in the comments too. Um, I'm gonna get this recorded because I sounded pretty good. I'm gonna start maybe halfway through. Cool. I'm not going to worry about quantizing probably as, as much as we go, but I think that next step would be quite nice. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So do you see what I've done? I've just taken on board the inspiration from both all of the themes. So the idea of using that two, that major, so that minor to major uh, change and also that uh, that change of just using those two notes as well. So I'm using a bit of inspiration from that harmonic language of Danny Elfman, but also the melodic language of Hans Zimmer as well, and also Michael Giacchino from The Batman. As far as I know, uh, the reason why they've used for they've used that kind of two note theme is to sort of have that scope where you can have. Um, so if I was to. Um, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. Can I have both? So yeah, it's that idea about, um, uh, sort of lost my thread. So the idea of you can have it, you can build in more emotion within that scope as well. I think that's probably what I'm trying to get at because you've got more of an emotional, um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, 
Hans Zimmer is clearly very, very popular and very talented, um, but I can see where that migration has gone, that evolution of the themes. Uh, and so he's definitely laid, again, as Danny Elfman did back in the 90s, that groundwork for a new shift in sound. So it's really uh, bringing together that emotional and that sort of darkness. And, he, and I think there's going to be quite a lot of interplay with that within this, the new score. So in terms of my opinions about Abbey Road, the library is Abbey Road 1. I really rate it. I mean, I have to say, um, I I really like it. I think with regard to Abbey Road, in terms of all the different options you've got here, I love the full orchestra. Uh, if I if I just show you that on the screen here, um, I I just love. Oh yeah, I'll just switch that piano off actually, just for the time being. But yeah. Yeah, let's turn the microphone off so you can hear it a bit better. So you could totally, totally go to town with that as well. So, um, yeah, I think that that would sound quite good because obviously I want to be able to bring it back to this. I do have, and I don't know if anyone else has used this, but of course I have a video on my YouTube channel which talks about using the Stream Deck to change the articulations in the Spitfire libraries as well as others too, both their contact and their standard uh, user interface. But sadly, and for some bizarre reason, having updated to Mojave 10.14.6, there is some really strange thing going on between the talking between the actual um, do, uh, the DAW and the Stream Deck, which is really, really frustrating. So, um, unfortunately, the control that I used to have about changing the articulations, I don't have at the moment. So I'm in the process of investigating the reason why. So I cannot change my articulations as I've got here button presses that basically put in MIDI notes to be able to change between these key switches here, here, here and here. So I now have to do it manually, but before I could just do it in one and it would just input a note and you could have a melodic line but change the articulations as you went without having to then go back to the computer. So the fact that I've lost that I, is a bit annoying, but I'm going to work on a um, I'm going to work on a solution and when I find that solution I will make sure I share that with you in a brand new video so make sure you are subscribed for that so 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 uh, okay Abbey Road 1 then that sounds pretty good I think I might carry on with another little section in here so I'm just gonna so yeah Probably too much, but... Man, you can just go. That's probably a bit too bright. Maybe it needs to be darker. What do you think?
maybe something like that, I think. Let's go with something like that, so... And I was so enjoying the quietness of that. <laughs> Thank you, Amir. You can sense the bat in that music, which is always cool. Um, so basically, I forgot to do any sense of rise and fall with that. And of course, I'm just going to have to do it after the fact very nicely. Get my, um, <laughs> get my stuff in there. So uh, get me this, get me my pencil. There's all sorts of shortcuts I don't use. I am very bad for that. Mm. Mm. Then this paint it in. In fact, let me just quickly paint this in. Mm. We're rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. And then maybe a nice rise at the end. So let's see what that's like. Uh, let's start. With Then we add in our percussion. Mm, okay, so we can do something like that. And now I do have a version in Logic where you can actually capture the idea. So say you're having an improv and you're jamming an idea and you think, I really love the sound of that. Then I... Uh, <laughs> You actually just press a button and it just brings up the idea that you just improvised. But I don't have this on this one, which is a shame. But I think I'm going to just go into, yeah, improv mode, improv mode again and see how we get on. As long as you don't mind the thumping on the keys, that's, that's, some people complain about that in my videos, which I totally understand. Might need to change the drum a little bit, I think. Who knows? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's there. Now, I might not be able to work too much on this for much longer. As I said, I promised you 20 minutes of music making, but I might just push this over for another 15 minutes, see how we go. What do you think? Do you, are you be happy to stay with me for another 15 minutes? Or are you, shall we, do, I mean, I could work on this probably. I'm going to definitely work on some more of this tomorrow and and hopefully share with you the results so if i can what i will do is i will i'll push out a, a youtube video this week which will show you that end result as well and of course it'd be the likelihood that if you wanted to uh, see what that end result was like then it would be made available um and i'll share where that is at the end of that video i am sure so yeah not bad uh The only thing I would say, and this is worth bearing in mind, Amir, is if you're using East-West libraries, I've never got really good sort of dynamic control out of them using a fader like this one. So over here, you can, I can never seem to sort of, 
I never seem to sort of get a good, it's almost like the opposite. It's almost down is up and up is down, which is very, very sort of intuitive, non, not intuitive at all. So I've really favored the Spitfire ones because you get a good length of, you get a good type of uh, dynamic control out of there. So if I just duplicate this Abbey Road one, and then maybe I just get a brass sound out of here. So where are we brass? Uh, I'm just gonna say horns. And the reason why I like Abbey Road 1 is because it groups those instruments together. So in terms of orchestration, it's pretty much done for you. So to get ideas down, it's quite immediate. So I'll give you an idea of what that sounds like. Hmm, okay, so it's definitely going to be worth. So, I'm mean, saying, really forgive me if you can say the chords again. So, you want me to say the chords, the ones I've just done? Uh, are you hoping to have a little play along? So, you basically start with the E minor to the C, to the C minor. And in that pattern, that second pattern, I used the E minor, C minor. E minor, and then I went to uh, an inversion of G sharp major, and then back again. And then here I went to uh, B flat major or A sharp major, whatever you want. Anyway, I'm getting carried away. So the idea is, yeah, you can absolutely go to town on that as well. So I am just going to quickly save this. I'm going to save it as, I'm just going to call it Batman. Because I've already got one called Dark Knight, and it was one that was done ages ago. So just going through each of these different sounds. Um, maybe Brass. I mean, Brass is good. I also like, in Abbey Road 1, I really like the... Um, the ensemble sounds, the foundations are good. And I've also got some of the additional ones as well. So you've got selections too. So you've got legendary low strings, which I really like. So you can maybe use more of these. Yeah, I mean, it can be seen as expensive, definitely am here. Um, it's worth just looking out around November and February and spring, and they do a summer one, but certainly in November, uh, they do huge, huge, huge discounts, and they always package these up into bundles too, so it's always worth just having a, a chance to save up, but it is well worth it. I think you, um, you have a certain sound you want to develop. If you want a close sound, Abbey Road 2 is really good, and it's really good for solo instruments. And for Abbey Road 1, it's good for that kind of 
that kind of more f- distant kind of film score sound as well that's almost um, ready orchestrated for you. And if you want to go really into the nuances, then BBC SO, BBC Symphony Orchestra is a definitely good one. I mean, as that that was one of the first ones I saved up for that one, and I was definitely pleased that I did. I yeah, I, I've tried to sort of stop <laughs> buying libraries and to say stop buying libraries and get making music with the ones you have. And I think just keeping it simple, have yourself something that is a say is what we talked about earlier on the labs. Keeping it simple, entry level in terms of what you can afford, you can make amazing music with very very little. Uh, and this is worthwhile remembering and these libraries are always uh, changing in price so just look out for that too so it's worthwhile considering that this sound always reminds me of a kind of uh, Michael Kamen Prince of Thieves, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves you know you know that that, that kind of a thing so uh, yeah Let's have a little, um, let's have a go of this as well. Realising my time is short, but uh, I always say that because I've got to put my family to bed and so I try to fit these live streams in whilst I can. And um, yeah, and as I say, I'm going to be doing more live streams. I've got a total of about eight live streams planned. I'm hoping to do them weekly, if not every two weeks. And certainly I've got quite a lot of content that's coming out. I've also... I'm going to be partnered and certainly partnering with a company called Switcher Studio and basically how you as music makers, composers, people who do gigs, especially during and post pandemic, you can easily sort of find ways to share your music with the world without necessarily having to hire a hall or whatever for now, build up an audience, a small audience and then bring them into a live space if you can. So, um, yeah, so I'll be sharing lots of things with you and I'm going to be trying to do more shorts as well. So if you haven't already, I've got a Ewan Smith Music Shorts channel that I've got dedicated for just really ed- anything behind the scenes, tips, tricks, quick things you can do, quick harmony things, melody ideas, just little almost scrapbook ideas I can just get down quickly, not quite as well edited as say the main channel will be so yeah you and smith music shorts and i've also got a third channel which i'm doing some videos for as well which is basically called mobile live stream success so all these are on youtube and they've all got corresponding uh, instagram accounts and they've all got corresponding websites as well so do check those out it's uh, in the early infancy the mobile live stream success but i'm hopefully going to build it up because I wanted to sort of do something more dedicated for musicians, but also any content creator wanting to look at, because I, I know a lot of people have really moved to particular platforms, but I, for me, having equipment I already owned, to be able to get ideas out to the, wor- to the world was where it was at for me. So rather than me having to spend money on a big bulky computer or spend money on a really sort of bulky, clunky, big DSLR camera that was very expensive, using a camera I already owned. I mean, look at this one, for example. This is an iPhone 5S that you can see now with this top-down view. And this is my personal phone, which is basically an iPhone XR, and the rest have just been hand-me-downs. So I've got one over the shoulder as well, which I've got, so there's there's all sorts. So, yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I'm going to play on for a little bit more, five more minutes, and then we'll stop the stream and I will carry on composing this and building on this for tomorrow. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get a video out tomorrow by the evening time. And hopefully, if not by the evening time, certainly on Sunday, you'll have it. So in the next two or three days, you'll have a new video from me on the channel. So make sure you are subscribed and also like and share this live stream as well. So, bro, so I like this idea.
Definitely important to have your sound libraries on SSDs. <laughs> Anyway, you probably heard that was my cue. So thank you very much for joining me this evening. Thank you very much for commenting and for being a part of the stream. And I will work on this in the next couple of days and we will catch up soon. So thank you very much for your time here with us and with me and for commenting and for saying hello and good to see you. And hopefully, who knows, who will get more of you next time. Thank you very much to Amir and everyone else who's watched on the replay. Thank you very much, I have been you. And don't forget to like this video, this live stream, and also subscribe to the channel. There'll be many more opportunities for you to be a part of this. Hopefully we can maybe make this a weekly feature, uh, hopefully on Thursdays. Who knows, I will try and plan it in and I will share the, uh, share the plans with you very, very soon. Thank you very much for your time tonight and I will see you in the next one. You take it easy. Have a good week. Bye-bye.